close of play of the first day of the first test between England and New Zealand at Lords. Sees New Zealand closing on 246 for three. 86 overs were bowled, so four overs weren't on what was a, a flawless day uh, weather-wise. So you consider, I think, that's uh, certainly New Zealand's day. They won the toss and they chose to bat first. And uh, Latham and Devon Conway in his first test match put on 58 for the first wicket. Latham made 23 before he became Ollie Robinson's first wicket. He got a, an inside edge into his stumps and was bowled for 23. Williamson never really settled. Uh, looked a bit scratchy when uh, he started. They went off for lunch. He came back and was bowled in the first over after lunch again with plenty of bat involved. In fact, a lot of bat involved. The entire face of the bat involved. Uh, somehow, some reverse spin got on the ball. He played it very late. And the ball has rolled back into his stumps. Who's out for 13? A big wicket. 86 for 2. 114 for 3. Another of the seniors was on his way. 37 year old Ross Taylor. LBW again to Robinson for 14. So two wickets for Robinson uh, at that stage. And 114 for 3 in the 38th over. England really back in the game. But since then, they haven't taken a wicket. A partnership of 132 in 48 overs between Devon Conway, who's now 136 not out, is the highest score by any debutant at Lords. He reached his. Sent you with a lovely wristy flamingo flick uh, through deep square leg. He's 136 not out. And Henry Nichols has kept in company. He's worked hard. He's not been the most fluent. But he's worked very hard and stubbornly through that. And I think he'll come back hoping to have a bit more of that fluency tomorrow. Uh, he's on 46 not out. Bowling-wise, Anderson's taken one for 55. Broad was wicketless. Mark Wood also wicketless, but a lot of effort in that. 18 overs, no wicket for 49. I don't think a single ball out of the 90s. Joe Root, 12 overs for 37 because England uh, chose uh, to uh, leave out Jack Leach. And so Joe Root having to do the uh, spin bowling himself. He bowled 12 overs and did turn one ball uh, really very sharply. So that's how it stands at the close of play of the first day. 246 for three. Uh, it is a little overshadowed, I'll be honest, by some, uh, some tweets that have emerged from the debutant Ollie Robinson of an historic nature. But they are racist and sexist, and uh, the ECB uh, were awaiting some sort of statement either from, uh, from the board or from him, uh, maybe during the course of the next uh, 25 minutes or so. But they date back to uh, 2012, when Robinson was 18 years old. But uh, that's clearly something that is going to have to be dealt with uh, by the management, and they're probably talking about it at this very moment. Michael Vaughan, uh, that has rather overshadowed things because of the way the day started, of course, with a, a display of solidarity with both teams, wearing T-shirts, uh, standing up to racism, sexism, homophobia, I mean, just, just about everything, and uh, it's, it, it's unravelled by the end of the day. Yeah, uh, cricket is for everyone was the slogan uh, this morning, um, and on day one of the campaign, you know, tweets from back in 2012 have, have come out. Um, I'm staggered that the ECB don't do their due diligence on everything. And, and, and by everything, I mean, if you're going into a partnership with, with anyone or a brand, you, you do your due diligence on and making sure that you know everything about them. Um, and they haven't done that on Ollie Robinson. You know, this could have easily been, I don't think it gets put to bed easily because what he has tweeted is out there. Mm. Um, you know, but a few weeks ago, surely England would have known that Ollie Robinson was in their thoughts. And you have to go through everything. You know, these days on Twitter, social media, it's all there for everyone to see. Uh, you can't suddenly, oh, why didn't they delete it? That's irrelevant. He's actually tweeted what he's tweeted in 2012. And yes, he was 18. But um, I, I do find it staggering that the ECB, with everything and the resources that they have in the operation, they didn't go through everything about every player that you're picking just to make sure that, you know, you've got, you've got everything covered. And, and as I said, a few weeks ago, it had come out. I, I'm pretty sure they could have. You can't put it to bed, but they, they could have moved it forward better than finding out on day one of the test match. Could have dealt with it. That's yeah. the point. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens as, uh, as a result of that. Um, <laughs> Bowling-wise, he actually bowled, he bowled rather well. Yeah, he I mean, he, he, got, he got an early wicket. It relaxed him a bit. And his, his second spell actually was a, was a lovely spell. Yeah, I, I thought England actually, for the majority of the day, were very good. Um, this is a beautiful pitch to bat on. It was a great toss. Yeah, it's a good pitch. Yeah, There's not there. a lot there. Oh, okay. Not yeah. yet. Maybe on days three, four and five, I mm. guess we might see a little bit. But even the low balls were wider. The stumps, nothing went low onto the stumps. There wasn't really any bounce. Uh, we've not seen swing. We've seen the odd ball grab off the seam. We, we haven't seen spin yet. Um, I, I was surprised that Jack Leach didn't play. Uh, mm. And this isn't hindsight. Was, I, I said this before play because you've got Jack Leach, who I thought was excellent in the winter. He's England's number one spinner. 
the weather's been dry. You're at Lords, you're on a dry pitch. You know it's going to be dry for five days. I just think you need a balanced attack and, and having a front line spinner in your attack is something I, w- I, I would have liked. Um, but How much are they stymied by, by, by the loss of those all-rounders? I mean, you've got, you've got Bracey at seven. Uh, number eight, I mean, OK, this is Robinson now, but I mean... The, the, and I guess that's probably why he he got the nod because he can he can bat a bit, mm. but then you're left with really I suppose the choice between between uh, you're looking for a bit different is it Leach or Wood isn't it and and uh, because you had to play Broad and Anderson together r- yeah, r- I, I, really I, I, you've got to pick your best team in in this circumstance so. Yeah. The, the, the loss of those all-rounders has, has, has affected the selection. Yeah, yeah, whichever way they were going to go this week, it was going to look unbalanced. When Ben yeah. Stokes isn't in your ranks, it's, it's very difficult. But, you know, Jack Leach is a, you know, a, a spinner that's developing nicely. You don't have to look at his numbers from the winter. 28 wickets at 31. He is England's number one spinner. You know, I would have gone with him. Um, I, I do believe in, in seeming conditions. Um, you know, you maybe need four seamers. You know, in conditions like this, you actually need a varied attack you know you need a pacer you need a spinner you need a couple of mm. bowlers like Anderson and Broad who can just knock an end and you know that the, the run rate is going to be very difficult from a New Zealand perspective but they haven't gone in, in with the spinner um, has it cost them I, I don't think Jack Leach would have ripped through New Zealand today no. there's nothing there for him but on day three four and five you know we know that the, the rough will develop um, and, and, and your spinner is picked here at Laws for day one day two to hold an end and on days three four and five potentially to get a few more wickets uh, so England haven't gone uh, with that approach but I have to say New Zealand are a class team because there's many teams over the last few years that have won the toss uh, on, on decent wickets and not capitalised and they haven't capitalised enough yet but to be 246 to 3 on day one you don't see that kind of score mm. in the modern game of test match cricket you know generally we see players get, giving themselves a little chance to get in and then having a dash and they make mistakes well you know, Devon Conway on debut, um, getting 100, the highest debut 100 here at Lords. Uh, I, I don't think his test career can ever get any better. No, no. <laughs> if I was him, I'd go up to that dressing room and say, uh, I've retired. <laughs> I don't think he can surpass today. No. And a great shot to get his. I mean, it was rather an out of character shot from the innings at, uh, on, on one leg and flicking it away over yeah. square leg. It was a terrific shot. But they're, they're playing the long game, aren't they? That's yeah. the point you're making. They, 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 got... they know there's going to be some deterioration here. Uh, they look at that England side and, and know it's light. They, well, they, you they, go they, back to when New Zealand beat England in New Zealand, they just ground England down. Yeah. BJ Watton with that double send, and it was like, oh, it's going to be a draw. It's going to be, and then the last day, oh, there you go. Yeah. New Zealand attacks. And that's what New Zealand will play this week. They'll know it's a good pitch. They won't expect it to deteriorate for another couple of days if it deteriorates that much at all. But, you know, from the way that they play the Test Match cricket under Kane Williamson, they're in it for the long game. And so many times over the last few years, we've kind of looked at Test Match cricket wickets and go, oh, that, that, that looks like a pitch that's been prepared to, to get a result in a, a few days. This looks like a Test Match wicket that's prepared to last five days of cricket. Yeah. What I liked about Conway was he was, he was hit a nasty blow, wasn't he, by Wood? And, and you are trying to sound people out a bit, aren't you? He hasn't played Test cricket before. and there's, it, 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 He didn't play it very well, but it was a quick ball, but it hit him... Sort of on the bicep, really, wasn't it? High up on the on the arm, and I, I mean, that would have hurt. And but you can imagine a few words going on. Imagine the verbals out there. Well, yeah. oh, come on, doesn't doesn't like it up him, all that sort of stuff. And that was the last ball of an over, and he had the whole of the next over off strike. But to think about, I guess, what he's going to do, what he didn't get right that time, what Wood might do, the first ball, the next over, and the first ball, the next over was Fuller, and he just played the most immaculate straight drive for four. Mm. And I thought, what? Well, you know, it was just it was just it wasn't even a sign of any issue no. from that ball that hurt him. And I think that's the, the sign of a player that knows his game and knows his mind. And I think that's the mo- most important aspect of playing at this level is your mind and, you know, the surroundings, playing at Lords, the media attention, everything that comes with being a, an international test match player is completely different to playing first class cricket. Mm. Yes, he's done well in white ball cricket, 50 over cricket, T20 cricket, but test match cricket is completely different. And, and that's one of the first tests as a batter, isn't it? You, you're looking, can you play the short ball? And he gets hit a couple of times and all of a sudden it's that length ball that's the danger ball because you're thinking, oh, his weight will be back. He might not transfer back into the delivery. And I, I, I thought that was the moment where you got, yeah, he's got a great chance and he's going to be around test match cricket for many, many years because he just transferred his weight and went boop, straight down the ground for four. Uh, you know, he's 29, so he's played a lot of cricket. He's played over 100 first-class matches, so he knows his game. But... Yeah. 
No, you don't see many on debut that look like they've played, I would say, not even 50 games. I would say look like a player that played 100 test matches already. <laughs> Let's mention Mark Wood. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a huge year for all these fast bowlers, isn't it? And, and how, they, how they operate. And a bit of competition between them as well. Let's be honest with Archer. I know we're out of it at the moment, but Archer, Wood, Stone. There's that little competition going on there between sort of the, the, the cutting edge of England's attack, if you like. My word, he, bowled, he ran in today, yeah, didn't he? I mean, the speed gun figures, I, I, I never really know about. But, I mean, but they were all really high today. Mm. And for, for Crick Viz to report, it was the fastest spell ever by an Englishman. I mean, that's, that's remarkable. It, 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 it looked pretty brisk from up yeah. here, let's be honest, on, on, a, on a sluggish pitch. But his effort and his energy, you know, he's bowled 18 overs there. More than Robinson, for instance, Anderson and Broad, you expect to bowl a couple more, but yeah, that's a lot of effort gone in there. Yeah, and he's got to come back tomorrow and do it again. Yeah. Uh, and then he, he potentially has to do it next week. You know, and you look at Mark Wood and you look at what England are trying to achieve over the next year, you know, to, to try and beat New Zealand in two test match series, then to try and beat India in a five match series, and obviously the, the big ticket down at the back end of the year is Australia. And what do England need in Australia? They need a bit of pace. Joffrey yep. Archer's injured with that elbow. Will he be able to play in the ashes? There is a question mark over that. So Mark Wood, Ollie Stone becomes so important to this test match team. So England will have to manage him. You look at it from a New Zealand perspective. So, yeah, he hit us a few times. He bowled some good balls. But you know what? Did he get any wickets? Well, yes, no. exactly. And that's what they'll be looking at. So tomorrow, Michael, before you have to um, put Potter off, well, it's, it's, it's wickets, isn't it? I mean, the new ball is, what, only uh, six overs old. So it'll have a bit of a bit of a shine on it. The sun's going to shine again, I think. But uh, England have got to get amongst it. Yeah, I think they might need a few cranes to get the bowlers out of bed in the morning. It's only the yeah. first uh, day of the, the international summer. Um, uh, it, the sun will be shining. I, I believe the forecast is, is fantastic. So um, the England management might be knocking on a few bowlers' doors in the morning saying, come on, I'm afraid you've got to go again. Try to that. It's a hard <laughs> job. Uh, and there's, there you are. There's a batsman talking. There you are, Michael. Thank you. We'll catch up with you uh, tomorrow, of course. And you'll see Michael... Uh, resplendent on the highlights on BBC Two in 10 minutes from now. If you want to see uh, everything that's happened uh, here today, including that lovely shot from Devon Conway to reach his, his century, but all the other parts as well, BBC Two in 10 minutes is where you'll find uh, the highlights of uh, today's play. Now, Jeremy Coney is back and he asked me a question. I can't remember what it was when I, when I, when I saw you away. What, well, who did you think was the best bowler for, for, oh, okay. for England? That's a good question. Um, I did like Ollie Robinson's afternoon spell. Uh, Very much. He'd relaxed. After lunch. Yes. He'd mm-hmm. relaxed. He got his wicket. He was off and running. It just it seemed like a like a very easy rhythm that he has. And there are these... Well, he's not a fast bowler, but there are these bowlers who who, who do make sort of easy pro- process to the, to the, to the wicket, don't they? They don't come... You know, he's got your Darren Goffs or your... Danny Morrison's, or who, who, we're talking, who goes screaming in. No, bursting a, bursting yeah. a vein in their neck. Well, it's this chap, so Mike Hendrick, or he's, he's yeah. one of those sort of very easy mm. types, isn't he? And tall, yes. strong. I like, so that, 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 was a, that was a nice spell. And I don't think this was a surface that really they would wrap up and put into their cricket bag to no. take around. I no. think it was a slow surface. And I think it, it just emasculated a lot of them just a wee bit to say, you know, oh, I'd like to re getting yeah. that ball and getting it coming through a little bit more. Now, how long have I been working with you, Jeremy? I know I, that you regularly, routinely, underplay New Zealand. Of course you I keep do. It cannily, you just, you it's the New Zealand play. way. It you is know the New Zealand way. It's the you way you play that. your cricket as it well. Is. So when you say, well, New Zealand have had a reasonable day today, you know, actually, they've had a pretty pretty damn good day, actually. Well, well three downs, three wickets, yeah. you know, in the first day of a test match, when you, even though the, the weather was set fair... Um, you're still playing against a Duke ball you haven't played since the five months from, yep. from the 6th of January. You've got a debut man opening the batting with you and you're against two very experienced opponents in Broad and Anderson in particular with 300 test caps. You know you know that's going to be a battle mm. and, and I think to be able to withstand that and get through to the end of the day, it's not a big total... So, in a way, because New Zealand haven't scored very quickly, there's a chance for yep. England to fight their way back and if they have a really good day tomorrow. Yep. So, you know, if they bowl New Zealand out for, say, 320 or even less, who knows, they're back in the game. Yes. So, you know, New Zealand still have some work to do. But, well, which side would you like to be sitting in? Which shed do you want to sit in tonight? I'll be in your shed tonight. That's right. Uh, I think so. I think you've got lots right. of batting to come. 
uh, and and also, I mean, Mitchell Mitchell Santner is a kind of a, a spinning all rounder, isn't he? I mean, he averages mid forties. Well, he got a hundred against England at uh, at uh, Mount Maunganui. Maunganui. He did. I was thinking of his bowling and towards the end because he saw one ball from Root spin today. Yeah, quite well, he had bowled he had bowled from this this the uh, the nursery end because yeah. that the slope would help him just a little. Yeah. So he and does seem he says, New Zealand does seem well equipped. They have more things. They don't seem well they? equipped to more take it options. on from here. Is what I'm saying. I, guess. I think they do have more options. Mm. Um, and don't forget Jameson. Not 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 just yeah. with the ball. He actually strikes a good ball as well, and yeah. he'll be batting nine. So there is a bit of depth Sally in this news. Ten. Exactly, yeah. and he'll well, he's he'll not some shots. Yeah. yeah, but but certainly, I mean, Jameson has a fifty, I think, and I don't yes, know what has. he averages, but it would be you know forty odd. Yeah. So he can he's more than just a, a one trick pony, and in fact, New Zealand are looking at him to be number seven. Right. It, it, you know, as an all-rounder in the future. So, yes. you know, they have some options. I think uh, they've got bowling things options go well. too, don't you think? They've got Southey to swing the ball, as we yes, saw it swing, swing a little bit today and do a bit. They've got Wagner to sort out the indifferent bounce here, running in and hurling it down as yes, we know they as do. it does. Uh, and then they've got, they've got Jameson. Jameson, again, tall, ex- exploiting that. I mean, they've they, got a nibbler in terms of de Grandom. Yeah, exactly. you know, one for 25 in that match we won't talk about. And then also, of course, they've got Santner. So the options are yeah. there for them. Um, that's a long way away, Agus, though. I mean, y- you can't talk as if New Zealand, because they've 240 for three at the end of the first day and say the game's over. Oh, no. There's a lot of work and hard work to be done yet. Yeah. Did like Conway. Uh, he's, he's, he, he was sl- lost a bit of rhythm, perhaps, in the afternoon, yeah. maybe. And, but, then, but then he got it back again. That's what well, I think all day. I've, I mean, I've seen him now since he's, he's played for a little bit for Wellington and, and also playing in the, in, the, in the short formats game. So, and he's been he's a shot maker. And we didn't see that today. No, apart, and he, from the, apart from the fall to his hundred. Yeah. Yeah, Wonderful that, that was flourishy. Flick yes, it was. A, a it was a flamingo shot. I like it that. was, yeah. um, but he, you know he can score all round the clock. It's not as if he's, you know, leg side predominant or he's, you know, lovely on the cut and so on. And that he's got all the shots, and he'll use the air as well. So, I, I think we didn't see the best of him, but we saw a grafting kind of controlled innings from yes. him today, and he, he did exactly what New Zealand would have liked him to do because you know when you look at the two senior boys with all the caps they didn't they struggled a bit today yeah, I yeah. thought I thought Taylor's innings was a bit tortuous yeah, actually it was. Uh, so and was then, Williamson's and so was Williamson yeah. so he, someone had to do it yeah. and and he accepted that responsibility which is exactly what you want in a team, you want su- suddenly somebody that you're perhaps not expecting to to pick the you know do the main hard work of the day. You want a crane to pull them out. He did it today. Yes. Can you can you sort of explain why Williamson <laughs> keeps not failing here? But I mean, he averages about thirty in England, doesn't he? When he's way above fifty, uh, generally. I mean, he'll be scratching his head about how he got out today. I would imagine. Yeah, he will. Um, even before at the at the back end of that first session, I thought, I mean, playing and missing a lot is not his game. Mm. Um, but he does have this habit, as you know, of playing the bat with such an angle on it yes. that it runs away. Normally, if it's outside the off stump, he can get some runs from that sometimes. It encourages some teams to put a second or a third slip very, very close in order, and they'll put helmets on to try and take a catch off him as he tries to run it down there. So it's quite well known now, and look, I don't know whether he's got into the habit of doing it, Mm. of trying to get off strike. He thought maybe he misread the line of that ball, perhaps, and tried to run it down and that sort of thing. I don't know, but it wasn't one of his innings that he likes, and he... Uh, he got a hundred here, I think, in one of the test matches he played. It might have yes. been got a hundred and twenty on, on a yeah. pitch that was again yes. moving Being around. around. Yeah. Um, so he can do it. Yeah. I don't know why, because it's quite a, it's 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 a bit of a mystery, isn't it? Thanks, Jeremy. Well, as we discussed, the day has been overshadowed by the historic tweets that have emerged from Ollie Robinson when he was 18. Well, he made a statement and then spoke to Alison Mitchell. On the biggest day of my career so far, I'm embarrassed by the racist and sexist tweets that I posted over eight years ago, which have today become public. I want to make it clear that I'm not racist and I'm not sexist. I deeply regret my actions and I'm ashamed of making such remarks. I was thoughtless and irresponsible, and regardless of my state of mind at the time, my actions were inexcusable. 
Since that period, I've matured as a person and fully regret the, t regret the tweets. Today should be about my efforts on the field and the pride of making my test debut for England, but my thoughtless behaviour in the past has tarnished this. Over the past few years, I've worked hard to turn my life around. I've consi considerably matured as an adult. The work and education I've gained personally from the PCA in my county and the England cricket team have helped me to come to terms and gain a deep understanding of being a responsible professional cricketer. I would like to unreservedly apologise to anyone I've offended, my teammates and the game as a whole in what has been a, a day of action and awareness in combating discrimination from our sport. I don't want something that happened eight years ago to diminish the efforts of my teammates and the ECB as they continue to build meaningful action with comprehensive initiatives and efforts, which I fully endorse and support. I will continue to educate myself, look for advice and work with the support network that is available to me to learn more about getting better in this area. I am sorry and I have certainly learned my lesson today. Holly, just to follow up on that, those tweets were when you were 18, but yes, contrary to that spirit of unity, the moment at the start of play today, are you fully behind everything that the team are doing on that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's a long time since those tweets and I've grown and matured as a person a lot in, in that time. Um, I was young and naive and I regret that. Let's talk about your performance today. Because you went out there, did you feel that you were ready and raring to go to make that test debut? Yeah, I was. Um, I was pretty amped up this morning. Didn't get much sleep, um, but it was nice to get the first wicket uh, in the bag. And it was a tough day for the bowlers, but we stuck at it well. Can you describe what that feeling was like? Because the celebration, well, it was with gusto. Yeah, it was like a feeling I've never had before and I, I just can't describe it really. Um, the emotion of, of that first test wicket is something I've dreamed about since I was a youngster, so it's, it's been a special day. Tough day as a team overall with the ball though, I mean, what was the conversation about what the pitch was doing, about what the ball, the ball was doing with the conditions? Yeah, it was, it, it was quite spongy first session um, and we just spoke about, at lunch spoke about keeping it tight, keeping the run rate down and trying to pick up wickets here and there. Um, they got away from us a little bit in the afternoon session, we pulled it back with a new ball. Um, so early wickets in the morning are going to be key. Yeah, Devon Conway, you've got to dislodge him. What's going to be the best plan of attack to do that? Um, just got to stay consistent and stay tight. Um, he played, Devon played very well and congrats to him. Um, but yeah, in the morning we've just got to stay tight. We've got the new ball still, um, hopefully we can nip a couple out. What was the best bit of advice you had prior to today making a test debut at Lord? Um, just enjoy the day and, and keep doing what I've been doing at, at Sussex for, the, for my county. And don't try and change too much just because I'm on the bigger stage. I think that was the best advice just to be in good stead today. Let's quickly hear from uh, Devon Colmo with Eleanor Aldroyd. Devon, congratulations. What a perfect day at Lords for you. What was it like out there? Yeah, it was a pretty special day today, you know, I think, you know, I couldn't, couldn't have planned it to be any better than that, that today, so, um, yeah, very happy with the way it went, um, so, yeah, it'll take a couple of days just to settle in. Sun shining, fans in the ground, there were quite a lot of Kiwis in here as well, it felt like. Yeah, it was pretty good, I think, yeah, I could hear the odd um, chirp, uh, chant here and there, you know, just sort of helping the guys along, so it was uh, good support, and um, it's, we're pretty grateful that we can get people at the grounds. Mm. In terms of the wicket itself, it was clearly a, a, a wicket for, for scoring good runs on, but you did look very comfortable and very at home. Oh, cheers, thanks. I think, um, yeah, the wicket's slightly slow, um, uh, but I think, you know, it's just about adjusting really and, um, you know, acknowledging the bowling. Um, you know, they bowl pretty well as well, so um, credit to them. But I think, yeah, it was a good day for us and I think we want to build on that tomorrow. Is this something that you dreamt about as a young cricketer growing up, that you would one day come here and play at Lords and score a century? Yeah, certainly. You know, you hear a lot of stories as a youngster about the honours board, you know, and yeah. funny enough, sort of asked Kane Williamson uh, a couple of days ago about what it's like to have your name on the honours board. And first thing he said to me coming up to the chain room was, you know, now you know what it feels like. So um, soak it in. And um, yeah, it's a pretty special feeling. So uh, yeah, pretty happy with the way it went today. Yeah, well, well done today and um, look forward to seeing you push on tomorrow. Cheers. Thank you.